Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Fallout Theorizer, welcome back to my apocalypse. In today's video, we will be exploring if it is truly possible for someone to survive the same injuries as Joshua Graham did. If you are unaware about the injuries that Joshua Graham, or the Burn Man, sustained, then sit back and relax while I tell you a story. But before I talk to you about Joshua, I would like to mention that I have a new Instagram page of which I will be posting Fallout related content. If you've enjoyed my content so far, perhaps you will enjoy my work there too, link in the description. Without further interruption, let's hear about how Joshua became the Burn Man. Before Joshua Graham was known as the Burned Man, he was Caesar's main general, the Malpace Legate. The Malpace Legate was widely regarded as an unkillable man, and being one of Caesar's longtime friends and allies, Caesar used this to his advantage and made Joshua a Legate. When the first battle of Hoover Dam concluded, the Legion were badly beaten and Caesar had to blame someone. And following with the old Roman tactic of decimation, the blame fell to Joshua. Joshua's punishment was to be covered in pitch, set on fire, and then thrown into the Grand Canyon. For my more foreign viewers, or those who simply don't know much about the Grand Canyon, the lowest part of the canyon is around 6,000 feet down. Despite this attempt to kill him, Joshua Graham survived. Rumors started circulating around the tribes that Joshua Graham wasn't dead, and this eventually made its way back to Caesar. Caesar knew Joshua and was aware of this possibility. In response, Caesar sent out his spies, or frumentari, to find and kill Joshua. However, only the spies and Caesar were aware of the mission and from now on, the name Joshua Graham couldn't be spoken in the Legion, and now Joshua was referred to as the Burned Man. So this all comes down to the question, how did Joshua Graham survive his injuries? Is it even possible for someone in real life to survive his injuries? You might be thinking, well, of course you can survive third degree burns, many people have. It's very difficult, but it's very possible, and yes, I completely agree with you. But we also have to remember that not only did he receive third degree burns, but he also lost a tremendous amount of blood and was very injured from the fall, which was at the very most 6,000 feet down. Those two variables combined together would make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to survive. And even though Joshua Graham gives his own reasoning on how he survived, I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. The flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left. I'd never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them, but I must try. This is not a scientific answer, therefore we need to look into it a little more. First of all, what are the chances that someone can survive a third degree burn? While my information is not exact, it is what is available. People who have third degree burns around 50% of their body have a higher chance of death. And since Joshua has his burns on 100% of his body, that limits his chances to, let's say, around 35% survival rate. We also must take into account of his age. Joshua Graham was around 47 at the time of his punishment, and that limits his chances of survival. As you get older, you are more susceptible to disease and infection. While not elderly, Joshua is at the age where his immune system would slow down. His chances lower to 25%. If he were 7 to 10 years older, his chances would go down to 15. Now focusing on Joshua's fall. As I have said before, the lowest part of the Grand Canyon is around 6,000 feet down. Joshua Graham was thrown from the northernmost part of the canyon. Since the Grand Canyon is such a vast place, it is difficult to completely estimate how far his fall was, but the northern edge of the canyon is roughly 6,000 feet down, depending on where exactly you are. This is when the estimates are difficult to come up with and even more difficult to calculate. First of all, a fall from 1,000 feet, let alone 6,000, is already a death sentence. If someone is able to survive a fall that great, then that is considered a miracle. This could be from breaking their spine, disrupting blood flow from the heart, etc. But there is one piece of evidence that I have not mentioned until this point. I believe that is a possibility that Joshua being burned allowed him to survive the fall. You see, when muscle is burning like how Joshua's was, it tends to contract and the joints will flex. However, 
our muscles would also lose density. I'll compare this to inebriation. When a person is under the heavy influence of alcohol, they tend to loosen up and won't flex their muscles. An example of this is how many drunk drivers are able to survive the crashes. This is possibly how Joshua survived the fall. This is simply a smaller part of the theory, so please take this with a grain of salt. Heading back to what I can confirm, Joshua was seen during the short movie to be thrown off very near to the cliff, and we get a decent view of this cliff. I believe it possible that perhaps instead of falling straight down, that he might have hit the side of the canyon once if not a few times, dampening his fall. I believe it possible that he also could have slid down the Grand Canyon. But let's say he hit the side of the canyon a few times, dampening his fall to around 9 stories tall or 97 feet, with the final chance of survival from his fall and burns being 13.185%. This is a very lenient answer, but this is the only one I can give without the chances being in the negatives or skewed. What did you think of this theory? Were there any points I left out or something you think I could have done better? Let me know in the comments section. What other content would you like to see from this channel? I want to state again that I have created a new Instagram page of which I will post Fallout related content such as Fallout news, memes, and updates to the channel. Thank you again for watching. In a world filled with misery and uncertainty, it is a great comfort to know that, in the end, there is light in the darkness. Every day we move closer to our judgment. We must do our best to walk in the footsteps of our Lord and teach others how to do the same. For many of us, the road is a difficult one, but the path is always there for us to follow, no matter how many times we may fall. Every day, some days are harder than others. Whether there is a God or not, his existence doesn't depend on what you believe or what I say. There is much to be skeptical of in this world, so it no longer surprises me to learn how many people don't really believe in anything. But I believe that our Lord was made flesh as Jesus Christ and died to redeem me, and you, and the sorrows, even the white legs, everyone. I know it may be hard for you to accept or even to understand. In my heart, I believe that though I am a sinner, I have been saved. And I believe there is something beyond this rock, and this air, and this water around us. Something more that is waiting for us. I have been baptized twice. Once in water, once in flame. I will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit inside, until I stand before my Lord for judgment.